Will a new small business coalition make a big difference on Smith Hill? Welcome to In the, in the Dugout, and I'm your host, Mike Stenhouse. As you know, this is our regular forum where we invite uh, guests to uh, discuss important issues in Rhode Island, simulating my old days as a ball player when we'd sit around and chat before a game in the dugout. For years, as you know, our center has been advocating for pro-taxpayer, pro-growth, pro-business policies that can make Rhode Island a more attractive place to invest in a business and to build a career. But with the worst business climate in America, according to one group and consistently ranking near the bottom by many other groups and a variety of important economic factors, it seems that conditions only get worse every year for small businesses in our state. Many current and former small business groups have failed to be successful in helping to create a more business friendly environment among lawmakers who seem tone deaf to their concerns. Even this year, I mean, think about it, federal money that was sent to Rhode Island because of the COVID-19 crisis, specifically designed to aid small businesses harmed by the shutdowns because of the pandemic, have been held back by this governor. She has refused to release the funds to the small business community. In my view, apparently hoping she'll be able to find a way to use those funds instead to plug massive projected revenue gaps in the state budget. Now, why would she release them after all? She's a politician who's more concerned, along with legislative leaders, the Speaker of the House, the Senate President, more concerned about their precious state budget than they are about the budgets of families and especially of small businesses in our state. Yet in recent weeks, backed by a new coalition of small business people, the Lieutenant Governor, Dan McKee, they have made major news by challenging the governor to immediate release about $125 million of the over $1 billion in funds that were sent to Rhode Island. And now they are claiming that any, any delays or any lesser amount might mean that many small businesses might just fold up shop and close their doors forever and taking away thousands of jobs with them. Here today is my guest. So let's welcome Lori Jatari co-founder of the Small Business Coalition. Laurie, welcome to In the Dugout. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I've made a lot of news lately, that's great. But before we get into business, you know our tradition. So we're in the dugout, we've got to do our little team thing. What, you, what team are you today? Well, so I do not have a lot of sports paraphernalia, but one of my biggest sports guys is my sister's boyfriend, and he's from Canada, but he is a, uh, he is a curling champion. Oh, so, I love watching that. My wife and I watch that forever when the Olympics are. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put my, I'll put my Canada hat on. <laughs> All right, well, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, on my Montreal Expos hat, also from Canada. So we're going to have a little... A little okay. Canadian theme to our discussion today. Right. If you want That's to take right. it off okay. later on, you can, but it's just for a little fun. All okay. right, welcome to our show. So um, let's look at the first slide. This past week, your group put out a communication mm -hmm. uh, where you really said that the governor's plan to release the money uh, was not good enough. So a bunch of things to comment on. First of all, you feel your group, along with the lieutenant governor, forced the governor to at least make a public comment and do something, correct? Yes. You guys have uh, have partnered with the, the attorney general. The governor responded and said she was going to put out $50 million. So in the first bullet point you see here, you're saying that's not enough. Tell us why. Right. We feel like 10% of the $1.25 um, billion that was sent to the state of Rhode Island um, is a decent amount to support small businesses, but our intention was to start there and and look forward to reevaluating in preparation for another round in the fall. And did you uh, tell me earlier today, or did I hear you correctly, that, that even the Small Business Administration is actually calling for maybe twice that much? Yeah, and I, I don't know if that was a anecdotal amount that I heard, but um, I cannot comment or commit to a number there. So um, I want to stick to what the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition is focusing on and, um, and really 
say that we, we feel like it's not enough and we feel like the process of getting this money out to small businesses is not fast enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, shouldn't it have been out the door already? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I that I've noticed, and um, I got to take my hat off. I'm sorry, <laughs> I am not a hat person, so I feel like I'm not myself. Um, so, I, one of the things that I um, I would say to in response to what the governor has put forward is that they're trying and that could be, uh, we tried to do our best and that's great. But I do think that a lot of the small businesses that eventually will receive this money will, will the money is supposed to be used for PPP or um, plexiglass or things that are gonna keep the business in play. But if those business doors are open, all of that expense has already been spent. And I don't think that a, a business can open without having already spent that type of money. So there's debt there and, um, and the businesses don't want any more debt. They want to receive grants to be used in a way that the businesses decide to use them. These are small business owners that have been open and running their own businesses. And so yep. they want to be able to say, this is what we need our money for. Now, we don't, we don't know exactly what's in the governor's mind and why, why she hasn't released the funds and why she's even still being evasive about it. Um, before we get to the next bullet point, but when you think of the possibility that she's hoarding these funds to use to plug budget gaps instead of aiding the small business community, what's your response to that? Well, I mean, it's upsetting. It's upsetting to us as business owners um, who are in good stead with whatever the state requests of us. Um, we don't want to be penalized for doing the wrong thing. And so we, we feel like it's, um, it's sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're, we're doing everything we can to operate by the rules and stay in business. And from a coalition perspective, we are really working with a lot of businesses outside of running our own businesses right. to help them plan and support what they need and direct them to places where they can purchase PPE and, and get the plexiglass. And even um, one, of our, one of our founding partners of the coalition has shifted his um, graphics organization to create plexiglass and has donated thousands and thousands of dollars of plexiglass. To let's, talk about, let's talk about that person a little bit later um, when we ask you more about your organization. Your second yeah. bullet point here basically says, hey, too much red tape and bureaucracy, too long for the application process. If it's going to take mm -hmm. weeks to get the applications ready to put out and then another number of weeks or months to process it, you're saying that six plus weeks is way too long and that many businesses simply will not be around then. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yes, that's a fair statement. I think that um, if you look at the, the statements that the governor made last week, it was a couple weeks to get an application up and available for small businesses to apply. It's on a first come first serve basis. And then a couple more weeks for review of those applications and dissemination of, of the money. Um, and so the businesses have to prove that they've, they've lost, I think, 30% in revenue um, or had a serious decline in their revenue. And so the businesses, you know, anyone that owns a small business knows that being an owner of a small business is like two jobs. You're running your business and you're serving your customers. And so what you're asking the businesses to do is step out of their business once again to jump into this process that will probably take more than six weeks. Your last bullet point basically says you don't feel that even the plan as it's been put forth is equitable. There are many businesses who are being excluded from this. Can you explain? So there are, um, they've been, pretty specific and well, let me not, let me just say there are specifics outlined um, around 
the um, food, hospitality, and retail will be the priority. Sole proprietors will not be in included in that. And so there are a number of small businesses like here you see salon owners or fitness centers or yoga studios, things like that, where you have a sole proprietor and the people that work with you in your business are 1099 and not on board employees. And so there's a disconnect between what's really happening in the small businesses and what this is, what the proposal is about. Um, I think there's a mindset that there, it's a very typical type of small business that the governor is focusing on or the Department of Commerce is focusing on. Okay. Let's take a step back. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your group, your founders, what your mission is, all that. Go ahead. Yeah. So the um, Rhode Island Small Business Coalition was brought together by the Lieutenant Governor, Dan McKee, and it started at Justin Gontarek, the owner of Oceanside Graphics, created a website in one weekend in March um, called Gift It Forward. And it was so that, so that anyone could buy gift cards and bring revenue and income into small businesses. Chris Parisi, the owner of Trailblaze Marketing, jumped in and said, oh, and if you don't have the opportunity to create gift cards or have gift cards available, we can do that part. And, and then at the same time, I was creating with my business partner, Shop Local Rhode Island, which was based on what was happening in our, with our clients. So clients that wanted to stay open needed a way to um, tell their customers we're doing curbside pickup or delivery or we're doing online services or online classes. And so we developed this shop local Rhode Island as one, an opportunity for people to go in and see who's open. You can search by, um, uh, you can just go on the map and say what's open in my neighborhood. As well as when the governor said, if you don't, if you're a small business and you don't have a website, the state will make one for you. So the state got thousands of requests for that, but the shop local site also gave small businesses an opportunity to have that digital footprint and say, you know, go there. We're in business now. We don't so want to like, apply. Kind of like paying it forward a little bit, right? Exactly. And well, so, think, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the Lieutenant Governor brought us together and we have been working fast and furiously around these small business issues and created the petition um, and got over 4,000 signatures on the petition to create pressure around this $1.25 billion. Okay. And well, going back to, you know, we were early on, I, I didn't know about your website or group then, but we, we went out and bought all kinds of gift certificates back in April with local businesses as a way to pay it forward. We're gonna, we're gonna save these until, um, yeah, until, until they're back in the normal flow and they can handle the expenses. But, but yeah. we encourage all businesses to pay it forward a little bit. If you have a few right. extra dollars, uh, buy some gift cards, and wait and use until they get back into our normal flow. All right. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your group. Your group and it ties to the lieutenant governor. Let's go to the second slide, Larry. And mm -hmm. your website prominently displays Dan McKee, yes. our lieutenant governor. Uh, now, so is this, is your group a private organization or are you a lieutenant governor, quote, government-led organization? We are not a lieutenant governor, government-led organization. <laughs> Um, although we have been brought together by the Lieutenant Governor, who is a, a big advocate for small business. And so, yes, the Lieutenant Governor will be engaged in our work and we hope that he is. And we wanna make sure that the board in this organization reflects all businesses and cities and towns in the state. And so we really do wanna make sure that there is a broad, um, kind of outreach so that we are putting forward the specific issues that small businesses want to change in the United, in the United States, <laughs> in Rhode Island. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm thinking of moving to Canada, <laughs> actually. No, no um, you're not. I know you're not. 
<laughs> so the anyway, so yeah, it's it's a nonprofit. We're in the process of creating and formalizing the nonprofit, um, the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition, and okay. we are asking people to join the coalition. All right. So beyond that's great. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So, but beyond the release of the federal funds, which I know is your current focal point. Um, what do you see as the long-term major problem in our state as a small business person that we need to address? Oh, well, um, I, have a, I have a very particular type of business. So from, I mean, I have a service organization. Um, we used to come together every day and now we don't see each other. So we had some investment in making sure that our employees had systems and computers in place so that we could do this every day. Um, so I think, you know, I think the, the landscape of small business is, is surely changing. But within the Small Business Coalition, I would say that it's, and I said this to you earlier, it's the plane is flying and it needs a new engine. And so we are, we are changing things as quickly as we can. So we have this two prong approach and the approach, the focus right now is on, on sustaining the small businesses and getting them the money that they need so that they can stay in business. And all of our efforts right now are on that. We intend to survey the, the organizations and the businesses that are in the group to be sure that we're addressing the important issues around the small business um, state in Rhode Island. Um, so that's kind of like, I can't give you our top three. I could probably, you know, we'll probably come up with 20 um, based on the different types of businesses. And at some point we will need to decide, you know, where the focus is. But right now our focus is on getting the federal funds to the small businesses. Now you mentioned you're forming a new nonprofit, the Rhode Island Small Business Coalition. Um, do you know how that's gonna be structured? 501c3, 501c4, 501c6? It's six. Gonna be, okay, so that's that's similar to the way a chamber of commerce yes. is structured. It's meant to be, yeah, you don't have to do chamber of commerce type activities, but right. structured primarily is a membership organization with business groups. Okay, yes. good to know. Yeah. Um, Will you have any kind of uh, special focus? Are you going to be representing all businesses in the state, or are you going to be focusing on minority and women's business groups? What's going to be the uh, the play there? I think the focus is small business. It's um, and I like I said, we want to create issues that reflect the state. So if we look at for example, we don't we don't want to um, silo businesses based on who runs the business. We want to go almost in a horizontal. You know, instead of like going deep into one entity, we want to go horizontal based on issues that we know can support and and really grow. I mean, this is about business growth and development in communities and in families. And you know, you don't. You, Rhode Island has all these little villages and towns and that's how we operate, you know, so we want to make sure that those businesses can really be sustained and grow in the way that they want to grow in the state. So whatever is across the board, I would say I would as a as a co founder of the group that would be um, my preference. Now, I know you're, you're forming a new organization. Obviously, every organization, nonprofit needs to raise money. So mm -hmm. while you haven't yet decided what kind of issues you'll be advocating for, can you talk a little bit about what kind of activities you might get engaged with? Are you going to get engaged with uh, lobbying? Are you going to get engaged with politics? Because a 501c6 can spend mm -hmm. money in campaigns. Are you going to get involved in just public uh, advocacy, more raising awareness of the public. Have you thought about what you're going to be raising that money for? Yeah, so I think that we we want to evaluate the issue, the political issues. We want to support candidates that are going to support small businesses. And again, having not having a clear sense right now of what those issues are, I think that we are going to move into 
an evaluative period of time. Um, you know, we've been hunkered down and as the Small Business Coalition, we know a lot of businesses have been closed and we have been like straight on supporting the businesses, helping the businesses, and we all are owners and running our own small businesses. So I can tell you that we are, we are tired <laughs> and we are, you know, we're really um, pushing forward. So one I mean- the, yeah. One of the problems you're gonna have to overcome is a general assembly who's not in the sun. So you know, really in our years of yeah. experience. And, and this year in particular, um, let, let's go to the third slide, Larry. Um, and during this pandemic, other general assembly or legislative bodies found a way to meet. And in many, many states, I can tell you dozens of states because our think tank is part of a national network mm -hmm. of think tanks, that many, many states met and passed legislation that would make it easier for businesses to get back on their feet and hire people as we recover uh, from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, both health and economic security. Our General Assembly has done nothing. Indeed. Not only haven't they convened, but they've done nothing uh, to pass uh, legislative reforms that can help small business. So one of the biggest ones and most popular ones in many states in which they're even considering federally, and I don't know what the holdup is, is passing some kind of liability protection for small businesses. Imagine if you bring somebody back to work and God forbid they get infected and become sick, mm -hmm. uh, they could sue the employer for, quote, bringing you into a, you know, so you can't on the one hand be encouraging businesses yeah. to go back open and bring people back to work, but yet keep them wide open to potential lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So you've got to provide some flexibility there. We've, we've put out ideas. We put out 30 ideas on things that the General Assembly can do. One of them they did, it wasn't the General Assembly, it was the governor. We're the first ones to suggest that they allow alcohol on takeout orders. And actually the governor actually did that one. Um, other ideas, immediate expensing. So that if you invest in capital equi equipment, like uh, whether it's PPEs or whether it's plexiglass or whether it's new machinery, you can immediately expense that and have to, instead of having to write that off over multiple years. Occupational mm -hmm. licensing, easing of licensing, restrictions so people can get into work, uh, making it easier to work from home or make it easier to do telemedicine so people don't have to go to, all these kinds of things have been done in other states. So have you thought about whether regulatory reforms, mm -hmm. whether it's in the pandemic or after the pandemic will be a focus of your organization? I have a very easy answer for you. We have not. <laughs> <laughs> You're I new. Think, I know. You're brand new. Yeah. Yeah. We're brand new. I mean, we obviously have looked at what other states have done with this federal funding. And so we know that other states are operating um, faster than we are. And I know that um, our governor has said that they have made mistakes. And so I, you know, I don't know whether to agree or disagree with that, but my, my professional opinion would be, it's okay if you make a couple mistakes, if you're, so this is, maybe this is more of a personal statement, um, but I would always, I always say to my team, you know, better done and out than perfect. And so yeah. this could be forward. a kind of a quick start mentality of like, get it done and get it out and, um, and not be so focused on getting every single little detail correct. When you know that there are some major issues, life, lifeline issues in the balance right now. Last question, and it might be another one you haven't had a chance to think of yet, but there have been, you know, there are and have been, as I mentioned in my open, other business groups. There are chambers of commerce. Of course, mm -hmm. the Providence Chamber is a big one, and, but there are many local chambers. There are many statewide associations, Rhode Island manufacturers, independent contractors, society of CPAs, all out there. There was the Gatsby Business Network, which, which is still up and running. There was a group called the Business Coalition. You're the Small Business Coalition, but they were the Business Coalition. They were primarily um, association heads and people close to government who became frustrated that their policy ideas were not given proper 
right. consideration in the General Assembly and that, and that the anti-business agenda just kept getting passed and passed and passed little bits of it every single year. So my question is, have you thought about why you think you've had great news in your opening, right? It's very rare for a new group to have the level of news you've had. Why will your organization succeed in changing this dismal business climate in the state where you think maybe some of these other business groups have not been successful? Hmm. Well, I hope that's the case. I think that we will continue to do the things that we believe in. I think we want to make it more about the mission and um, you know, Dan York just said, oh, maybe you're a little Pollyanna about this, <laughs> but, and maybe I am, but I think that it takes, it takes strength, it takes decentralizing the issues to bring them together. And so there are all these pieces out there and each one of them needs to slowly be put together in maybe a different way. Um, you know, how many employees really want to come back and do the same thing? How many, so how do we look at business and say, we're moving into the future. We're not making decisions to get us back to where we were before. And I think that with schools, with business, with downtown offices, we haven't yet seen the full extent of what businesses are going to be faced with. And we'll probably see it in the next few months. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like um, we want to, we do want to invite organizations, chambers, um, all sorts of business groups uh, to, to the table. I mean, this has got to be collaborative. It has to be proactive. And we are being very focused right now. And you're going you're to find that many of those groups are hopelessly compromised themselves, either, yeah. either because they're the insiders that don't want to rock the boat or they are receiving some kind of funding from mm -hmm. the state that they don't want to jeopardize by speaking out. So you've got, so, so while it might be too early to use a term like Pollyanna right now, there are some serious operational questions you do have to consider. And right. the next time we talk to you, I hope, hope you and your team have thought through some yeah. of those. I know you're brand new. We, we, get we are that. brand new. I'll tell you, I think it was late last week when we finally decided to say, yeah, we're doing this. And so, so you caught us four days later. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's agree to ask those questions again. Next time we have you on, we'll monitor your progress. Listen, our state sorely needs a voice for the small business community. We've right. been seeing that since day one. I've helped in some efforts on that, but the obstacles are enormous. Yeah. And and um, and it's and it's sad because because without uh, we all want better jobs and better paying jobs, but unless we have uh, more and better businesses to hire those people and offer those jobs, that we seem to do everything possible in the state to make it a hostile place for employers, and I think that has to change. Uh, Lori Gatari, Gatari, thank you for being with us. We wish you luck with your new group. And uh, thank you very much. back and update us in the future. Will you do that? I would love to, yes. And I will, I'll get a better hat next time. All right, better hat. And what website do you want people to go visit right now? Uh, the RI Small Business, oh, sorry, rismallbusiness.org is if you're interested in signing up to be a part of this small business coalition. That would be wonderful. Best of luck, luck, and thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Good day. Right. We're in the dugout. We'll see you next inning. This is Mike Stenhouse.